Okay, in this video I'm going to talk to you about the outcome outline, what the outcome should look like and how to structure it. The first thing to remember about the outcome is that you have a total of 2,000 words to play with. Of that, approximately 150 to 300 should be for the introduction which means that your key findings, of which there is probably around about three, will have around about 500 words each. That will give you approximately 1500 words. This leaves your conclusion, which you should have somewhere between around 350 to 200 words. Make sure that you leave enough words to be able to resolve your question. Referencing. You will be pleased to know that it doesn't count in the word count, but you must in-text reference. Remember how we did it in Word. If you can't, ask and I will give you a quick reminder. I'd also recommend that you spell check and proofread your work. Um, a word on graphs and tables, etc. Things like um, you might have completed through your primary research because of course you've got to incorporate primary research. They don't add to your word count. If you are only referring to them. However, if you use them to introduce new ideas and information, they do. So it can be a little bit of a grey area. It's uh, a fine line. See me if you are unsure and need help to work it out. And again, proofreading is always a good thing. Um, each key finding or whatever you want to call it, um, your focus areas, whatever you want to call it, should start with an introductory paragraph or an introductory sentence, start with an introductory sentence. This tells the reader what they're about to read about, obviously. Um, the main points or the guts of the paragraph are then laid out in a logical order in paragraphs. The final paragraph, and again my spelling, the final paragraph um, or sentence should be a summing up of your findings and sometimes it will also be um, an introduction to the next topic. Not always, but sometimes it will be. See when those squiggly lines are gone? It means I've actually proofread my work. It's always a good thing, guys. Um, now that is the same as paragraph structure that you guys get taught 
about in English. So remember your paragraph structure. There should always be a beginning, a middle, and an end. Simple as that. Okay. Where possible, try to nominalize your work, but don't just throw in big fancy words to try to make yourself sound smart. If you don't know what the word means or use it in the wrong context, it does the exact opposite. Remember the kiss principle. If you don't know what that means, ask and I'll help you with that as well. Um, nominalize. Nominalization is where you structure your work correctly and you write in a academic style. So um, this means not using I. Talking as the third person or I think it's called um, the passive voice. I think. So that's some hints and tips for the outcome. Something else I want to show you really quickly if you go on to the SACE website, which is just sace.sa.edu, go to Learning, Cross-Disciplinary, Research Project. Down here you will have Support Materials, and if you go to Research Outcome, you will find exemplars of research outcomes here, including an example of a video that a student made, which is a really great one if you're not doing a written exemplar, a written outcome. You'll find that the exemplars, these are from the SACE board, you'll find that the exemplars are annotated so they will tell you a little bit about how the student achieved the grade that they did. For example, this is a C grade piece of work. The notes and the annotations explain why it was given the C grade. So they had a satisfactory synthesis of knowledge, some of the findings were substantiated, expression is generally clear and coherent, etc, etc. That's straight from the performance standards. Um, here's another one, how to maintain a successful YouTube vlogging channel. And again, this student has incorporated some graphs and things within their work. Um, one thing with regards to in-text referencing, do avoid the type of referencing where you've got a reference at the end of every single paragraph. Some work does actually need to be recognisably your own. And if you've just put a reference at the end of every paragraph, it kind of looks like you've just gone through and referenced willy-nilly at the end anyway. Um, this one, the long-term monetary health and product benefits of organic and biodynamic cereal production is simply a different type of format that you might be interested in. It's written much more as a magazine type article and again there is information there about why the student was received the grade that they did. The last one that um, I pulled up just to show you really quickly is a A plus example. You'll notice that the writing in this one if you read through it, it is very well written, very well structured, very academic in its language that they've used. They've used um, technical language within context, so they obviously understand their topic and what it means. Uh, it's very well referenced. Um, information has been sourced from a very wide range of sources, including you'll be able to see down here from interviews, uh, a range of interviews that were conducted, surveys, etc. They've also incorporated some of their primary research in the forms of graphs and then discussed those um, pieces of information. It's very well substantiated. 
each of the um, subheadings or the key focus areas provides detailed information on the topic right down to the conclusion where they have resolved their question. You'll notice also that this one is a word count of 1500. It was from about three years ago when 1500 words was the limit for the outcome. It has now changed to 2000 and yours are expected to be around the 2000 mark. Okay. Um, there's also a bibliography provided at the end which shows quite a reasonable amount of um, sources that have been used including primary sources such as interviews and surveys. Alright, good luck.